The audience, if the congregation will please rise. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, welcome to the funeral services of Stephen A. Clayson. Uh, I'm Bishop Kilpat Casey Kilpatrick. I'll be conducting uh, the service today. I would like to recognize President David Martineau on the stand who is presiding and is with our stake, member of our stake presidency. Uh, the, the, a family, the family prayer was previously offered by Tyson Clayson, Steve's nephew. Um, we'd also like to uh, recognize our prelude and postlude accompanist, uh, Corey Mendenhall, as well as our chorister today, which will be uh, Sister Joey Clayson, a sister-in-law. Uh, we will begin with a congregational hymn, hymn 293, Each Life That Touches our for, Ours for Good. Following that, the opening prayer will be offered by Gatlin Hurst.
Heavenly Father, we bow our heads as friends and family in remembrance of our beloved Steve. We gather here today to honor the life, the love, and the legacy of someone who meant so much to each of us we're grateful for the time we shared and all of the many, many memories that we hold dear. And especially the profound impact that Steve had on each of our lives. As we bid farewell, may we find solace in the cherished moments we shared and may Steve find eternal peace and rest. Grant us the strength and comfort in the days ahead as we navigate life without his physical presence, but may his spirit live on in each of our hearts forever, amen. Um, our program will now proceed as follows. Uh, first, we will have a life sketch from Angie Clayson, uh, Steve's sister-in-law. And then we will hear from Mike Clayson, Steve's brother. And then Mary Ann Clayson, Steve's sister, followed by Josh and Eddie Clayson, uh, Josh a nephew, and Eddie also a brother. Uh, and we'll go to that point. Stephen A. Clayson, age 48, of Spanish Fork, Utah, passed away on March 28, 2024. He was born on February 29, 1976, to Snick and Olive Argyle Clayson. He is the baby brother to Eddie, Michelle, Marianne, and Mike. He was married to Susie Osick for 11 years, and that union brought three stepchildren, Christopher, Kara, and Aaron Scott. Steve grew up in Spanish Fork. His childhood was spent running around with all the neighborhood kids, Lots of night games and board games, and frequent walks down to Johnny's for his favorite penny candy and drinks. 
he had an abundance of childhood friends that all hold very fond memories of him. And I got to be one of those. He graduated from Spanish Fort High School in 1994 and went on to graduate with a bachelor's degree from Utah Valley University. Steve was a very hard worker and enjoyed all the friends that he made through his career at Pacific Horizon Credit Union. Steve was a big BYU sports fan and had season tickets to both football and basketball. He often shared those tickets with his nephews. He enjoyed many trips with his brothers and his nephews to away games. And thanks to Eddie, we have lots of evidence and pictures of all those trips and videos. There's lots of wrestling usually. <laughs> he also loved cheering on the Utah Jazz and the New York Giants. Steve loved to learn and was always taking new courses related to computers and business. You would often find Steve in Las Vegas and he could always pick a lucky slot machine. One time when we were 18 and 19, we got caught gambling and he got arrested. You'll have to ask me about that story. I'm younger than Steve. <laughs> He was Uncle Stevie to not only his 12 nieces and nephews, but to many, many other people that loved him. He was so kind and thoughtful. He loved buying gifts for those that he loved. He supported all of his nieces and nephews in their special events and endeavors. He was always making us laugh. His giggle and his funny faces will never be forgotten. Steve is survived by his siblings, Eddie and Joey, Michelle and Brian, Marianne, Mike and Angie. He leaves behind his adoring nephews and nieces, Tyson, Josh, Jordan, Colton, Jessica, Madison, Jace, Peyton, Tate, Brock, Lolo, and Cam. He was preceded in death by his sister, Allison, and his parents, Tick and Olive. I just wanted to add one little thing. You know, Steve had a way of making every single person feel like they were number one. We all felt special to Steve. And, you know, one of his favorite things was to give us all nicknames. And I'm going to name a few of them. So if you're here, you'll know. Okay. Hookie, well, that was me. <laughs> um, Vira, Hoochie, Jace Fault Pie, Cam Moron, Natasha. Now, that's not that funny, but her name's Haley. And I don't know if it's because he couldn't remember her name or... He just thought you were Natasha. I don't know, but you're still Natasha. Um, Nate Dog, Pay Tony, P. Diddy, T. Late, Safe Bet Sally, SG, Chucker, Whitner, Shawnee, Boo Rad, Bonner, Hoda, Tai Tai, Titsy. Fatty, Gaddy, two by four, couldn't fit through the bathroom door. <laughs> J.A., Rube, Hard A, Jangles, Boozer, Kimbo, P.H., Sethinator, and our favorite, Butchie. I know that there's a lot more that I'm forgetting, but I also know there's a lot more that I didn't forget but couldn't say from the pulpit. <laughs> so... Just wanted to say, Steve, we love you so much, and you have a whole army of people that love you. It's going to be a big void. You were a special part of my family. It was always Angie, Mike, and Steve since we were kids, and we love you. This is one more reason I can be mad at him, because I did not want to do this. In fact, I didn't think I was doing this. My wife said, your name is on the program. So you look funny if you don't get up. Most of you know me. That wouldn't shock you if I look a little funny. So I've, I've stressed about what to say for the last, well, 24 hours since I figured out I really have to do this. And I, and I thought I had to share some stories. Number one. At our house, if you got in trouble, you would not be shocked to have a shoe fly past your head. Mom would throw things. You were hoping it's a shoe and not a tab can. Well, I hope in heaven they have tab cans, and I hope it's full, and I hope she throws it. 
because he deserves it. I think back to the one time. Those of you know him, we can talk about how good he is, and he is, but he was annoying. <laughs> you know it. You might not admit it today, but I will. I'll never forget. He followed me around one day, just annoying me. And I, he, whatever he could, like he had a special talent to do that. And I, I finally got to the point where I'd had enough. And he, he came up, and so I pushed him, and he fell down. Well, okay, that's, you know, normal. But then he just kept egging it on. So I picked him up, and I threw him over the fence. Yes, over the fence. And why? Because it was there. I don't know. But I thought, you know, I'm going to be in trouble. Sure enough, a minute later, mom comes to the door. She hollers. I'm, I got news for you. I, Butchie, she thinks she's tough, but I got her. So I go in there, and I'm, I'm so sorry. I feel really bad. And, da, 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 go, go sit on your bed. So I went and sit on my bed. The door opens, and it's dad. I'm like, whoa. Apparently, you're throwing somebody where the fence is serious. <laughs> so my dad, a big, gentle giant, gives me a stern talking to and and just tell me what I should have done, what I should have done, all this stuff. And and he says, so do you understand? I said, understand what? I said, that you shouldn't throw your brother over the fence. Why did you throw him over the fence? I says, dad, you've met him. He's annoying. He says, that may be true, but you still don't throw him over the fence. So I, I remember, he I got grounded for a week. That seems a little extreme for a throw over the fence. Well, you know who comes walking by, doing a little dance, pointing? Steve. Well, my mom told me what to do, so I threw a glass bank at him. Then it was two weeks. Um, I'm not going to cry. He was more than a brother. He was more than a best friend. He meant everything. <laughs> Possibly the nice human I've ever met in my life. He could not say bad about people. He could only see the good. I hope in my life I can strive to be a little better because sometimes I've got a smart mouth and I like to point out negative things. The thing that's got me through this He's my understanding, my savior. I will get to see him again. I wasn't done with him. But I know that my mom and dad and Allison are happy. And I know they will be entertained now. I want to leave you with my testimony and a challenge. Brothers and sisters, we have a Savior. I don't care what else you believe, but we have a Savior. That is what's getting me through right now. I will be able to see my brother again. My Savior understands what I'm going through. He went through it. He is here for me and he's here for you. My challenge. And I'm horrible at this. When you marry into the Dancy and Vasgard family, the, it, they're, it's different. I'll never forget one of the first time I met Grandma Cleo, and I know she's listening. She came up and kissed me on the cheek. That's the weirdest thing I've ever had happen in my life. <laughs> Clayson's don't kiss, hug, talk. We're, we just head down and go to work. And it, really, I was freaked out. And I walked up to Angie. I said, your grandma just kissed me. Oh, yeah, she'll do it all the time. Can I tell you, I wish Grandma was here. <laughs> I need her kiss. So before you go to bed tonight, hug your people. Tell them you love them. They need to hear it. They need to know that somebody cares for them. This is the hardest thing I've gone through in my life. And it's only through my family and my friends. I told my wife, I think during my waking hours, there has not been more than a half hour where I haven't got a heartfelt text from somebody. And it means the world to me. I love you all so much. Steve loved you all so much. Friends and family, 
I love my Savior. I love you. And I love my brother. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm kind of in the same position as Mike was. Um, I thought I'd get off the hook with maybe reading a nice prophet quote at the gravesite and not have to actually go through this part of this. Um, the outpouring of love and compassion that everyone here has shown her family it's a true testament to who Steve was as just a, as a person and a human being. And I hope that we all can find comfort in our family that we have a community around us to help us go through this and the true impact that Steve had on all of us individually. And as a person, because you guys wouldn't be here if you had had an experience with Steve that meant something to you and that was special. I've been reaching out to some friends that were also had known Steve as a kid and just thanking them for the memories that he's given their inside jokes. Steve always had an inside joke with everyone and everything. And if you knew Steve and had an inside joke, you knew you were, you knew you were in the right place. Um, just want to take a minute and and tell Eddie and Michelle and Mike how much I love them. I'm not always around. I might always be in a different country or on a different border, but I, I do check in and I love them each each and very much. I think the last few nights I've prayed myself to sleep, just asking for Heavenly Father to soften our hearts and to soften our souls and allow us to come together as a family and grieve through this tragedy. And I do hope Olive has a full tab can. I might hope it might be one of the old bottles that we used to be able to go collect and return. You know, maybe her aim will be okay. You know, I figured the bottle's a little longer, the centrifugal force, maybe that'll help us out. Um, Steve had a relationship with Olive that I, I don't know to this day if any of us truly understand. And when Olive was really sick, I, I kept saying if I could just have a fourth of the faith of Olive, I would, I would know that everything's going to be okay. And when I went home on, on Saturday to get some items, a neighbor came by and he had heard what had happened and reminded me that at this point in time right now that our Savior knows exactly where we're at as he, as Sunday was coming and he, of all people, would be able to comfort our family. And I'm really trying to find solace in that and, again, pray to open my heart to the sadness. And I'm still continu continually in awe the hate and anger that people can say and, and and just try to continue the grief that our family's going through. Um, his laughter, his inside jokes, the crooked eye. If you knew Steve, you knew all of these were true. And sometimes you'd have to ask him, which eye are you looking at me with if he had his glasses off? We were blessed with 48 years with this wonderful man our brother, our uncle. And he was still a human being to everyone and, and humble in every way that he could be. Um, I think my new roulette number is going to be 29 in honor of Steve. I'm, you know, I can't tell him that I'm going to have it be red. I think I'm breaking out in a rash being in all this blue. <laughs> But he's worth it. I think I can suffer through. And I just, I do, I ask that Heavenly Father continues to soften our hearts and open our hearts and understand that there is, there is a plan of salvation.
and that I know that he is with Stick and Olive and Allison and that someday we will be together again. I just want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their, their schedules to come and be with our family and, and show the support because of love. It's something that I know that we can look back on and have this as an inspiration and a testament to who Steve was. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow, there's a lot of you out there. So, <laughs> Well, I think we can all feel Steve. I know I sure can. And he's laughing at me right now because there's one thing he knows is I hate being in front of people almost as much as he does. And I know he hate all of us talking about him, but let's just keep it coming. So I was lucky enough that I got to live with him, work with him, be his nephew. So I'm going to share some stories that I have from him and share some that the other cousins do too. We know anytime we're coming over to Grandma's and Steve's that he was going to load us up, take us to a park, play football tag, swing, go to Blockbuster Video, pick out candies and movies and games, and we're just going to party the whole weekend. I'm not sure I ever saw Grandma, Grandpa. I saw Mike every once in a while, but we were just running and playing with Steve. One year I was 16, and I was going to go on trek. Well, I was bribed to go on trek. And if I was going to go on trek, I could spend the whole week with Steve when I got back. And it was going to be my first drive when I was 16. And I remember pulling out the map quest, going through trek, doing that thing, just knowing I got to go hang out with Steve for a week. And the day I got there, we ran a blockbuster video. We got tons of candy. We got video games so that I could play the whole time he was at work. And as soon as he got home, we were going to go up to Mike's and play with the boys. Steve loved his family. And he loved his friends just as much. The Hearst family, Warners, Priegos, everybody. They were his nephews and they were family. And I know how much he loved Friday nights with the Hearst. And I know that was the one routine when I lived with him that I was going to be able to do too. Back to living with him. He's very clean. He's very OCD. <laughs> I think it was the first month I decided, okay, well, I got to eat some actual food. So I made some eggs and toast, and oh, he was so mad at me. <laughs> I didn't know why. Finally, because when he's mad, he just doesn't talk to you. Like, if he's not going to tell you, finally got out of him. I got toast crumbs in the butter. <laughs> and the house smelled like eggs. So I think the next three years, I ate string cheese and pudding and ate out. Like, there wasn't much I could do. Being OCD, one of my favorite memories is Mike coming over with Peyton, Tate, Brock, and paying them money to drag their butts across his vacuum lines. <laughs> and then I don't know if Austin's here, but Austin loved all of his robot slaves because he had a vacuum in every room that would go vacuum for him when he was gone. And Mike coming over to breathe in his air filtered air because every room had its own filter. Working with them was the best. He loves his employees and he loves his members. He's also an instigator, like Mike was talking about. And I could be in the middle of the loan, sitting there talking to members, and I could get hit in the head with a rocket or a dart, just right in the middle. And I don't know if he's aiming at me or them, but he was attacking someone. His laugh was very contagious. He had multiple. His real one was kind of like he was wheezing or choking with a snort at the end. And he had an evil laugh too. So if you're working, you could hear the giggling coming from another room and you would have to run and see because either you're about to get attacked or somebody else is. He also has a little thing where he'd bite his tongue or his lip and he's about to poke you and try to run. But he ran like his shoes were five pairs too big because he could not run. Some of my other memories were coming over and playing with all the friends. We'd play Halo, play basketball, wrestle. And Richie brought up and multiple cousins that his favorite move was the camel clutch. He'd also chin. And then Tyson reminded me about all about the scissors where he'd squeeze between his legs and shake it. 
I also want to give props to Steve that I think he's still the king of the basketball court because I can't remember him playing ever since he swatted Richie to the 10th row. So the game just ended. We went home. I don't know what the score was, but if you get blocked by Steve, it's over. <laughs> I was lucky enough to go to Vegas with Steve uh, 30, 40 times just between basketball, games, football just because he wanted to go eat crab. It didn't really matter. And I've done my best to keep all the stories pretty PG because we're at a church and grandma's watching. But one of my favorite ones is probably about 15 years ago, I was pretty young and naive and we were down gambling. Well, I was, I was watching. And some lady walked up to him and I just remember his face being bright red, shaking no, trying not to look at her or me. Finally, she leaves and he says she was offering us a two for one special. <laughs> His half was free, but my side was too expensive, so he said no. That's the... But I know he knows we love him. I know he's laughing at us all right now. But enjoy the day and celebrating Steve. We love you so much. And I don't know how to end these things, so I'm just going to give a thumbs up and sit down. So. And before I get booby like Mike, I want to say hi to Beck, Emery, and Staley, who are in Texas. So, um, yeah, and that is um, Beck, Emery, and Staley. If you're a BYU fan, you'll understand that. So, I uh, and I'm, I'm glad to hear Mike's going to be a nicer person. So, this is recorded, and we can play that for him over and over again. And I'm going to try to keep it light, too. Steve did a lot of things that really mean a lot to me, and I'm going to try not to talk about those. Lobo was going to be my safe face, and she's not my safe face. So I've known Steve for the longest time because I'm the oldest brother, so I'm 14 years older than Steve. And uh, I, got to, I got to see him grow along. Mike mentioned it. Steve was a mama's boy. And a lot of times, I, she didn't mean it mean, but my mom had kind of a list of who's the top kid, who's the last kid. Um, Steve was number one, <laughs> and then we'd all fight for second, third, and fourth, and fifth, and whatever. But uh, Mike was usually pretty good about taking up last place, and Steve would be first. So <laughs> we could just stick in the middle, and that would be fine. And he would poke, and I would watch him poke them and then run and say, Mommy, Mommy. Mike's picking on me. And I'm like, he started it. <laughs> but he did like the he did like the start stuff. So when he was about eight or nine, I started dating Joey. And uh, I brought her home one night. We were watching movies. And he would come over and he would hold her hand too. So he was, I think he was dating Joey. And then he <laughs> he did tell her. <laughs> I was, I don't think I was there when he said it. He's like, if Eddie's ever sick and can't take you out, I'll go out with you but you'll have to drive. So. <laughs> and he did, he did, he did love Joey. Um, so um, we had a couple trips out. So again, Steve matured. He wasn't quite as annoying when he got older. I'm trying to find, I don't know, Gaddy, was he quite as annoying when he got older? <laughs> he liked to, he liked to tweak and poke. So um, I first got married, and Steve would come out to camp. Now, Steve's not a hunter like Mike and I. Steve comes out for the food and the king peasant and stuff like that. So he would come out. Well, Joey came out. She said, I'm going to try hunting with you. I think that'll be fun. And uh, she came out. She thought, well, when they go hunting, I can just sit in the trailer and read. That's a perfect weekend. Um, Steve stayed in the trailer with her, and he wouldn't shut up. And she finally said, I got to go find Eddie and check on him. And she drove down two miles down the road, probably to Juab County and uh, read her book and left Steve home <laughs> back in the camp in the trailer. One of my other buddies, we, we did a lot of really cool stuff with the boys. And because they're so close to my kids' ages that my, my kids grew up with Steve and had a lot of fun with him. And we were up at Gooseberry at Fairview and we were, we were camping. And I have a, a friend, um, he came by last night, a bigger guy named Byron. Well, I was out fishing. I loved to fish, and Byron was stuck in camp with Steve, and he kept warning Steve. He's like, Steve, you need to knock it off. Steve, you need to knock it off. Well, Grandma wasn't there, so Olive's not there to protect him, and Byron says, you do it anymore, I'm going to throw you in the lake. 
and I get to watch from a distance <laughs> Ira take him out and throw him in Gooseberry Lake, and Steve got Steve got dunked for his misbehavior. So, and I don't know that he ever told Grandma because I don't think Byron got in trouble for that. <laughs> so, when I went on my mission, I went to Korea on a mission, and Steve was really young. Uh, he had been six, seven-ish, maybe. And he watched every episode of MASH, just waiting to see me on MASH because he knew it was in Korea and he kept waiting to watch for me. And he never did, never did see me on MASH. So, and I think churches are kind of like Vegas. So it goes on in church, stays in church, right? So um, we sometimes are not super careful when we take the kids out to play. And we did have a the game called Can't Catch Me. And we would go on the four-wheelers and we would play tag. And initially we were not very safe. And so the way you could tag somebody was, you had to get really close to them or bump four wheelers. And there was a lot of discussion on how that would really work out. We eventually changed it. So you'd throw a football and it wasn't nearly as dangerous, but we're out at Topaz Mountain. We're playing Can't Catch Me. My four wheelers smoked so much that I like to play at night. So you couldn't see the smoke trail and follow me. You could smell it, but you couldn't see it. Well, Steve, I, Steve was not as athletic as some of some other people, and so he couldn't throw well. And so that's why I think the nephews always thought he loved you, but I think he had you on the back of the four wheeler so you could throw the ball for him. So um, Tyson was on the back. We were running at night, no lights on, because you'd get busted if you had the lights on. And uh, he's got Tyson on the back, and he's trying to hide from whoever's it. So. He was back in between these trees, and the only time Tyson could see what's behind is when he'd hit the brake light. And so he'd hit the brake, and then Tyson's going, cliff, 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 cliff. <laughs> and about that time, somebody went by, and they went forward and chased, chased after him, but they, they escaped that one without injury. Um, the only injury we had was actually one of my bishops who came and played with us at the sand pit and cracked his ribs playing Can't Catch Me, but the rest of us survived it fine. <laughs> Um, and Can't Catch Me, Josh, he talked about the, his laugh. So Can't Catch Me Hill is just up a little bit from where we camp. And I'd sit, sit out at camp and I could hear him laugh. And his laugh was so loud. I'm, I don't know, we're 300 yards away and you could hear him laugh. And you know, he had done something to somebody because it was that evil laugh that Steve had. <laughs> it was just so much fun with him. Um, we need to invite uh, somebody new to come to camp. I've talked to uh, a couple of Peyton's friends, like, because when Steve showed up to camp in his in his outfit, because he didn't really wear camping clothes or camo, he'd wear an outfit. Um, he would he would bring bags and bags and bags of treats. Like, I don't know, your kids probably would eat those treats for weeks after. Um, so we need somebody to take that place because it's, I don't know, a lot of treats. And so um, just looking forward to that. Um, one of my funny stories, and I don't remember who was in the car with us. We, like Joshi said, we made so many trips down the Mountain West, WCC, football, basketball. We've been to Vegas so many times. And uh, we pull along. I don't remember even what car we were in. And we pull along the side and there's a homeless person sitting right there and he starts to approach the car. And he's coming at us and <laughs> Steve reaches over and he locks the doors and they are the loudest locking doors I've ever heard in my life. And the homeless guy looks at us and started to smile. And so we'd do that to Steve every time we would walk, we'd pull up to a corner, we'd sit and lock and unlock the doors so the homeless people could hear it. Uh, um, my, I think my, uh, well, I got an apology for him because I also, when I'd go to his house, I would do the bunny hop through the vacant rooms to mess up the vacuum lines. And I know he'd have to re-vacuum after I left, but I didn't make a mess. I just made lines in his marks. And the, the last thing I have, and they've talked a lot about basketball. We've been able to play basketball with the nephews and the brothers and, and had a lot of fun. Um, Steve, not a great outside shooter, um, but when he hit a three, he was like Joe freaking Engel, talking in your face, just talking trash. It's like, oh, he made a shot. And defensively, we didn't have referees, and so when nobody else was looking, he'd hang on you pretty hard. So he 
he could guard like nobody else, but that's because there are no referees. So I, uh, I do, I do, I love my little brother. Yeah, see the fun stuff. So <laughs> he was so good to me, so good to my kids, so good to my nephews, so good to my grandkids. I love everything he did, and and uh, the family, you know, Michelle and Marianne, Mike was so so. Did not want to do the funeral. They didn't want to do this. We we're going to do a simple gravesite. Um, but he has so many friends. And you're the reason we wanted to do this. You guys need closure too. And thank you for coming. Thank you for all the kindness. Mike's got more food up at his house than he knows what to do with it. And uh, we do appreciate all the love. Um, Steve again showed us up. He's going to be up with mom and he's tattling on us. And I hope she kicks him good in the butt first, but then we'll be in trouble after that. It'll, somehow it's all our fault and she'll side with him. So I, I know he's in a good place and I know he's with my mom and dad again. And I'm thankful for our savior who understands the pain. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <clears throat> so that'll be my opportunity to say a few words. Um, following my remarks, our closing song will be hymn 152, God be with you until we meet again. And then the benediction will be offered by James Langle, a friend. Um, <clears throat> I feel like it's pretty appropriate that um, part of this, I, I really appreciate all of the the words, uh, the music, I'm grateful for the spirit uh, that has been with us today. I think it's appropriate that some of this has turned into funny memories, a um, little bit of a, a little bit of a roast, um, just knowing Steve it just had to be that way and it's totally appropriate. Um, I <clears throat> met Steve probably 20 years ago, roughly, um, lived just within a, you know, now I'm two doors down from Mike and Angie, but uh, was a neighbor for, for 20 years. We've been neighbors. And of course, Steve was around them all, all the time. So uh, I really enjoyed just my interaction with him socially. There were you know parties and get togethers. And uh, so I, I echo so much of what's been said today about memories of his laugh and his kindness and his quirky, you know, some of his idiosyncrasies. I was really uh, grateful to grateful to know him. Um, I also had you know had a couple of work related meetings with him over the years, uh, several years ago. So I I mourn with each of you. <clears throat> um, uh, certainly, uh, they're a great loss, <clears throat> and he did so much for so many and was loved and is loved and uh like as been has has been stated he now lives he's now in the world of spirits i'm thankful uh there's many things that are unknown in this situation there's things that we don't know about the next life there's things we don't know about this life and everyone's circumstances um and yet <clears throat> there are there are many, many known things. And uh, one thing, a few things that I know I want to want to touch on. First, <clears throat> I know that Steve and each of us has a loving father in heaven. I know that. I know that he has a loving savior that overcame and each of us has a loving savior that overcame physical and spiritual death that we can live again and be reunited with loved ones. And um, I know that to be true. I know that Steve <clears throat> and every one of us will be judged <clears throat> by a kind, perfect, all-knowing, loving, compassionate savior, even Jesus Christ. I know that. Um, I would hope that 
something that has been said today or maybe just in your quiet moments as you feel the spirit of the Lord that uh, you and I will be inspired to do a little better. Um, as, as Mike said so appropriately, hug your loved ones. Um, do that nice thing for someone else. Um, Steve certainly did that all the time, was super generous. Uh, I think it's a good reminder to each of us as we, as we celebrate a life that each of us every day, in a sense, we are writing our own eulogy. And we are hopefully trying to become the type of people that uh, will be celebrated and revered and like we are with Steve today. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm thankful for, like I said, a Father in Heaven that loves us, for a Savior that is perfect and lived and died, that we also will live again. And uh, I, I testify that Steve is in the world of spirits. I testify that uh, each of us will, will follow that same course and that uh, we lived with our Father in Heaven prior to coming to this earth. And we lived with the Savior there. We learned this life <clears throat> is a time, as it says in the Book of Mormon, in the Book of Alma, it's a probationary state. It's a time to prepare to meet God. And this is the second act. And then there's a third act that we, we don't have visibility into. There's the life after this life. I know that to be true, and I'm grateful for that knowledge. I'm grateful again for the for Steve and his his life and how he touched so many. And I say this those things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for this day to gather here and celebrate Steve's life. We're thankful for the many, many memories that we've had with him and that we'll continue to carry on and live our lives um, with his legacy and the valuable lessons that he taught us. We're thankful for all the Clayson family and friends who've uh, continued to help all of us mourn through this tough time and thankful for what thou has given us. Heavenly Father, we ask you to please bless all those that are here and those who know Steve, bless that we again can continue to carry on the great valuable lessons that he's uh, uh, left us with. Bless that we can seek those who, who need our help and thy help and that we can wrap our arms around them and tell them how much we love them and that we can always let them know how much we love them and that we will always be there for them. Holy Father, we ask you to continue to watch over the Clayson family, that they may feel thy love and thy presence and the presence of Steve and us so we can, again, always remember him. These things I say in the name of our loving son, Jesus Christ, amen. Will the congregation please rise? If we could have the pallbearers uh, come forward. <laughs> <laughs> 